in the wave of COVID-19 spreading over the earth, there's been an avalanche of claims from proponents of alternative medicine methods. Some of these are from homeopaths, others from acupuncture and herbal medicine, and there are several others like use of vitamins and colloidal silver. What is quite interesting about many of these methods is that they are in fact old. Some of them are very old, which means that it's quite uh, unlikely that anyone can say anything whether they will work against the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. Some of these methods have been used in previous epidemics, but when one looks at the scientific evaluations, it turns out that it's quite questionable whether those treatments had any role at all in those epidemics. So we really must be critical towards those claims. The fact that uh, we do not have um, uh, well-established working pharmacological treatments of COVID-19 is no reason to use non-working methods. Uh, a vacuum is always filled with garbage when it comes to um, health matters. Uh, there are very many uh, methods promoted when there are no good available treatments uh, that can be recommended. But um, uh, as I said, this is no uh, good reason because that means that uh, people will be wasting time and wasting money on methods that have not been found to work. These methods can do harm uh, because uh, people may rely on these non-working methods and use them for a period of time instead of seeking professional help with evidence-based methods. So people may lose time, and in the meantime, the disease may get even worse. An even greater potential problem can be that people use these alternative methods, perhaps even prophylactically, and think that they will be protected. And this may lead to these people uh, taking greater risks, both for themselves, exposing themselves to people who are infected, and they may, if they have the virus, they may go on infecting other people if they think that these methods work. So there are great dangers with these methods. They can lead people into a false belief in that the, the disease is not as severe as it really is. What has been especially marketed in the past couple of months are herbal extracts from um, different uh, suppliers, from different markets. And uh, there is no doubt that we have seen uh, quite a few such remedies being promoted in China. And um, uh, these are often very complex mixtures of plants herbal extracts containing between 10 and 20 different plant components, each one consisting of perhaps hundreds or thousands of different molecules. And in such a complex mixture, it is uh, very unlikely that uh, any of the components will have a sufficient quantity to make any difference at all for the person who's taking the remedy. What often happens when we are dealing with something that is partially unknown is that conspiracy theories pop up. Some of the conspiracy theories on the web are quite ridiculous, but since there are so many of them, it can be difficult for an individual person to say what is the truth or if there could be some truth in those conspiracy theories. Um, but uh, one has to be very careful and be critical towards these. Uh, 
one problem that has arisen during the COVID-19 pandemic is that many scientific journals now let scientists publish preliminary data that have not been reviewed by peers for quality and accuracy. So many tentative results are being published and picked up by laypersons or uh, general journalists who may not have the expertise to judge the quality. And uh, these uh, findings are then propagated prematurely and maybe there are some caveats that make the conclusions invalid or exaggerated. But when uh, the papers are taken back, when the reports are taken back, that will not reach the headlines uh, to the same extent as the initial claim. Uh, so this is a problem that the scientific community has to deal with. And uh, uh, the discussion is quite intense in scientific media about this problem. With this abundance of fake claims and fraudulent messages, fortunately there are also some web pages that collect these and point out why they are false. And there's a number of such websites available now that are trustworthy and do a careful job to find the sources of the various claims.